Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another deck profile. So today we're going to be doing Dry Drawn, the first deck profile of the year. So uh, I played this at the YCS, the remote YCS uh, this past weekend, and um, I haven't played this deck in a while. This is the first time I played it in a tournament in like months. So uh, I definitely made a couple misplays that I really shouldn't have made if I had more practice with the deck. Uh, but I didn't do so well in the main event, but then I went and I played a couple side events. I played in a regional flight and I played in a Yu-Gi-Oh day, and in both events I got second place. So uh, still pretty good. I think my overall record was five wins, two losses. So it's kind of like a regional topping-ish uh, deck profile. So uh, let's go ahead and get into the list. I think that it's actually a really good list um, for this format, and uh, it's very similar to Tadsum's uh, deck profile that he posted on his channel. I basically like did a lot of it and then made a couple changes. So uh, yeah, um, three alpha, three zeta, three gamma, two delta. This is like the main Drytron lineup. Obviously, I think that these are really all that you need, uh, but I do maybe want to experiment with a third delta in the future but for right now like this is actually really solid you don't really want to draw a lot of multiples they do kind of suck like sometimes i saw two zeta sometimes i saw two gamma and they weren't like too great um but for the most part i think that this is actually just a really solid drytron lineup um so that would be 11 main deck drytrons just normally and then for spells to get to them this is spoilers, we don't want to go over that. <laughs> uh, is uh, Drytron Fafnir, three copies of Nova, and three copies of Emergency. Uh, Nova obviously is like extremely overperforming, especially because like with uh, Chowfang, you can't like summon lights, but then you can just activate uh, the like, no, or what was it? It was not Chowfang, it was something. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is Chowfang. You can't activate light effects. Uh, so you would use Drytron Nova to summon it to field, and then you could link it off for like a Link Rebo and like maybe work something out of it. So it was like definitely more playable than the other two were. Uh, it comes up in a lot of situations where you just need to attack over something that's like really big, um, and that happens. So sometimes the Drytron Nova is really good. Fafnir is actually insane. I'm gonna bump this up to two probably. Uh, against a Sword Soul matchup, you can decrease the level of a Shuda or Moye or the token to level two or five respectively depending on what you do with the Vashuda um, and then they kind of just can't play <laughs> like they there's no uh, level six synchro that they can make in their deck which is kind of insane so Fafnir I think I might bump this up to two at some point I missed it at one point I was like oh I won't do it on the Vashuda I'll do it on the like the the long one when they summon it or something like that and that was just a really dumb mentality uh, it cost me the game if I would have just used Fafnir on Vashuda I would have won the game so uh, definitely a misplay on that, but uh, it happens, and uh, I'm really glad that I know that, because I saw it on the field, and I just was like, oh, I'll, I'll wait, I'll wait, and uh, it cost me the game, so. Yep, uh, moving on into fairies, we have three diviner, th uh, two uh, orange light, and then the one Ava. Uh, this is really all you need, you don't need more. Um, honestly, sometimes I would even just side out the orange lights. Um sometimes even both honestly like i would side out these three because like i would like to see more hand traps that were actually good uh these are really good to fight back like against your opponent going into turn two but like at the same time you kind of have to like pray to draw with them and then you also have to pray to draw a fairy so like a lot of times i would just side out the entire like fairy engine like for these cards like this these three and then side out the ultimateness and just side in good like going second cards and i'd be fine and uh, i never miss them when i did that so i'm kind of glad i did although there might be a time when i do so it does need a little more a uh, little bit more experimentation uh, two preparation of rights, one Benton, one Idaton, one Natasha, one Ultimateness, and one Draconids. Draconids seriously over for, uh, overperformed. Uh, I got Scythe locked, and I was like, okay, I don't need my extra deck. And I summoned this, and he like fog bladed it, which is fine, but I was still able to survive another turn. And then the next turn, I just summoned it back with Gamma, and then I just started punching. And he just lost. He couldn't do anything. I didn't go into my extra deck once that entire game. So uh, shout outs to Draconids. This card is nuts. Shout outs to Scythe. I don't need you. You you lock me. That's fine. I still play. Uh, this deck's really nice. Um, then moving on into spells, we got a Collector Rare, uh, Medionis Drytron, uh, three copies of Ultimate Rare Forbidden Droplet, uh, hit me up if you have a misprint, uh, two copies of Talons, and one copy of Call by the Grave. Uh, so these were just kind of like counter cards, uh, which was what I wanted here. 
but uh, honestly, I am not a huge fan of the talents. Um, a lot of the times they were just dead in my hand. A lot of, there's not a lot of hand traps this format. Uh, I was expecting to get drolled a lot or to get you know uh, like anything like Ash or something, uh, Valor, uh, which had happened a couple times. Like I got Valored, but like it just wasn't nearly as much as I thought it was. So I think that in the future I'm gonna just replace these with actual consistency cards. Um, probably just a Fafnir and a Delta. Although if you really want to, you can keep these in your deck because they were really nice going second. Uh, to just like if they activated like a Chijao, I would just like activate this, take the Chijao, and then I would uh, turn them into the Verte because <laughs> we're playing Dragoon. So uh, I don't think that's really a big surprise, but um, not DPE in this list, which I know we could play. We could play the entire Scythe engine. Uh, I don't think that it's worth it, though. I think that playing the Dragoon engine is just better uh, because a lot of the times uh, decks, oddly enough, have like a really hard time outing Dragoon. Uh, and that's what's really important, I think, is just having a big boss monster to deal with if they hand trap you like two or three times. So, yeah. Moving on into the extra deck, we have two copies of Fafnir, one copy of Beatrice, one downward, one Zeus for the Zeus package. Um, I think I made downward once the entire event, like between both uh, the side events and the main event. Um, and I don't even think it was necessary, so maybe the downward's cuttable. Um, a lot of the times, like the previous format, it was like really useful, but I think in this format it's not like the very powerful, honestly. Uh, then moving on into the other stuff for targets for Diviner, have these two. Um, this is all you need. Sometimes you miss the arc light, the second one, but like it's not like game changing, so it's not worth it to like include it in the list. Uh, one Link Rebo, one IP, one Phoenix, one Unicorn, one Appaloosa. Um, so the big difference between mine and Tatsum's list is that he's playing the Underworld Goddess and I'm playing the Axis Code instead. Um, I think that Axis Code, uh, it came up for me a few times. In the main event, I played the Underworld, but it never came up. Uh, it was really cool. It came up in like testing when I was like, oh, this is like a really cool line I can do. Um, but it just like... It didn't come up in the main event enough, so I switched it for the side events into Access Code Talker. Uh, I don't miss it at all. Uh, I think the Access Code line actually came up once in the main event and I didn't have it, which was the problem. Um, I think I still won the match, but it was just really awkward. Um, also, IP isn't that good. Um, there were a lot of times where I just didn't need to make it, or if I made it, it did nothing. And so I think that in the future, this might be cut from the list. Um, and I might put in something else. Uh, a couple times, I think I missed the Lurlus bird. Uh, if that was in my list, I could have made Zeus a couple of times. Um, because a lot of the times, people just put their monsters in attack mode. They, like, don't respect Lightning Storm, which is crazy. Um, so this might be the Lurlus bird going into the future. I don't know. Uh, but for now, like, the IP was actually really underperforming uh, the entire day. And then obviously the Verte Dragoon, there's nothing to say about that. For the side deck, uh, we have three token collectors. I put these in, uh, in the main event I played Lancia's. Um, I hated it, it was terrible. I switched these to token collectors because I lost like all my matches to Sword Soul and I was like, that's not happening again and I put in token collectors. Another really insane thing about this is that you can send it off Beatrice, which I actually never did, but because I, I just forgot the line existed. But you can send this off Beatrice for turn one, and then turn two, you can send Ava, or you can do vice versa, I guess. But like either way, you get two forms of interruptions, and one of them is a floodgate against the deck. So that's insane. Uh, I would definitely play this again, and uh, going first, I would even put in a copy so that I can do that Beatrice line. Because uh, that is nuts. Moving on, we have three copies of Nibiru. This card's really good. Uh, it's like the end all of like PK boards and stuff like that. So I like it. A lot of decks can play around this or into it or, or through it or whatever. So it's like whatever. Three copies of Cosmic. We specifically play Cosmic because of stuff like... Uh, this over like lightning storm obviously because it's a quick play like if they activate like uh, anti-spell frequency or imperial order you can chain this to it obviously but also against the pk deck uh you can hit scythe and it doesn't destroy it so the scythe doesn't come back so that's really important so this is uh better than scythe for that specific reason um yeah for other cards we play is a re uh, red reboot and a feather duster 
These might be changed to Twin Twisters, but the only thing about Twin Twister is, like, that Cosmic also does is uh, it plays into Lord of the Heavenly Prison, which I didn't see today, obviously, but um, this plays around that. The Twin Twisters and these, like, I guess this does, but um, the Feather Duster doesn't, so. Yep, moving on into the rest of the last cards. Three copies of Red Lotus and one copy of Imperial Order. For going first, you set out the Droplets, and you can also set out Draconids, because uh, they're kind of just like bricks. They don't really do anything. And you can put in these, uh, which is insane, because every time that I resolved Red Lotus, I won the game, which is insane. But I would set this card, and I would look at their hand, I would take something out of it, and then whatever they didn't have, I would use Dragoon to negate, or I'd use the Ultimate Nest to negate, and, like, they just couldn't play. Uh, the insane thing is you'd mostly hit Dark Ruler. Uh, there was one time where my opponent Prosperity, and so I saw his Prosperity, he grabs, like, uh, Skill Drain, and I was like, okay, sure. And then I activated this. Uh, I, I waited, because normally you, you wouldn't wait because of Dark Ruler, but I waited because I knew he was playing Duality and Prosperity. Um... And then he grabbed the skill drain, I looked at his hand, and I saw strike, and I was like, okay, so I'll hit the strike, and then uh, on my turn, when he activates skill drain, I'll just use Dragoon to negate it. <laughs> and then, uh, like, the strike obviously wouldn't destroy the Dragoon, but, like, if he had both, he could break my board, uh, which was the important part. But, like, this was just so important. And then, like, sometimes I would, like, draw this for turn after I Red Lotus hit them. Like, one time I, like, hit a Desires out of their hand, and then the next turn I drew another one, and so the next turn I hit the Desires again. Uh, and then I just, like, won from there. It was great. So, uh, Red Lotus seriously overperformed. I would absolutely play that card again. This card was insane. So, um, yeah, shoutouts to Tatsum for the idea with that. But, um, yeah, that's really going to do it for today's list. Um... I guess I could go over some matchups. Um, I think I already mentioned like the PK stuff, and I mentioned a bunch of the Sword Soul stuff. Um, honestly, uh, there was one time where I kind of got like uh, stream sniped. I guess is maybe the best word, but um, I, in my regional flight, the final round, it was really stupid. Uh, the guy joined when I was in round three, and he was like, "Oh, this guy's on Drivetron." And then uh, we went into our next game, and he won the die roll, and he just set up Chaofeng Protoss and called Light and Dark. Well, I mean, Chaofeng was Light Earthlock, and then Protoss is Dark. And I was like, "Bruh!" And I drew Droplet for it, but like, he just had everything, and it was the stupidest thing ever because if he didn't know I was on Drytron, he would have made the normal uh, Sword Soul board, and I could have definitely cracked it with a. Uh, with a droplet and that's really stupid and i hated it uh but you know what can you do i guess they just like to stream snipe you and they're like oh i guess i'll just make a chow thing against you and win and uh it was really the stupidest thing ever so uh that was probably the most tilting like matchup ever um but yeah no i played against a lot of really good sword soul players where they would like crack my board uh, and just kill me <laughs> and, uh shout outs them to them honestly like that they were uh really good players but Oh uh, yeah, that's going to do it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, Shoutouts to Drytron. Shoutouts to these dice, by the way. These ritual dice. Uh, I got these from uh, a couple of events. Um, I actually did an opening with all of it, but I never like showed my pricing and stuff like that, which is like three months old now. So if you really want to see that, I guess let me know in the comments and maybe I'll still upload it, even though it's a couple months old. Uh, but uh, yeah, shoutouts to these dice that uh, lost me basically every die roll. I guess they wanted me to see the ritual, huh? So... Uh, that's why I lost every die roll, wasn't it? Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys later.